Yes, we are in our second week of Christ in the Carols. Uh, it has been a great series so far. So far, sorry, Pastor Tony kicked us off last week. And uh, if you haven't listened to the message, don't stress, don't fear, because you can log onto our app and you can actually download it from our app and any uh, uh, podcast uh, app that you use as well. Just search Victory Church and find our, our logo and click on it, and you'll be able to download last week's one. And it really is an incredible, incredible uh, message. And so I want to encourage you to do so. But this week we are in week two and uh, as you may have just realized after hearing that song the carol that we are looking at today is O Come All Ye Faithful O Come All Ye Faithful now I have a bit of a confession to make I don't know the lyrics to that many Christmas carols is anyone else with me or is that just me it's just like Dan you are the only person ever that doesn't know many lyrics to Christmas carols but I, I, I don't know about you but sometimes I know like the first verse and maybe the first chorus of it you know what I'm saying? But then like anything after that, any additional verses, I just didn't know existed. So uh, what happens, I don't end up like actually seeing the lyrics because I just end up humming the entire thing, you know? So it's like, you know, let, let's say like, let's take last week's Oh Holy Night. Uh, I know them now because I listened to last week's message. So I now I know the lyrics, but let's just take it. It's like, Oh Holy Night. The first verse is fine. But then like you get to the second verse and I'm like, uh, 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 uh. You know, and like you're just kind of like humming the entire thing, you know, uh, and it's just like, I, I, and it's not even just Christmas carols. I do this with all songs, you know, like, you know, I'm that guy that when you're singing along with your friend in the car when you're driving and they turn the radio off, like I stop singing, not because I'm afraid of what I sound like, it's because I don't know the lyrics and I don't want to be exposed for it. Um, and, but I, I, I struggle with some of the Christmas carols, but I mean, Come All You Faithful is one of the Christmas carols that I know every lyric to. And so when they were like, Dan, which one do you want to preach? I was like, give me your Come All You Faithful uh, for no other reason. Just God's just speaking to me about that one, guys. I don't know why. No. Oh, Come All You Faithful. But it's a great song. And I don't know about you, but when I, when I listen to that song, I actually come away feeling, man, it's actually quite, a, it's quite an overcoming. It's quite a victorious song. Like the lyrics in the song, the, this whole series about what we're doing, Christ and the carols is not just singing a song and not just listening to it, but actually looking at what do the lyrics actually say and how can we pull truths out of them. And so when you sit down and when you listen to, oh, come all ye faithful, I don't know about you, but something stirs up inside of me, which is weird because I'm not the type of person who gets amped about Christmas carols all the time. But when I listen to Christmas, when I listen to Come All You Faithful, I'm like, man, this is such a victorious song. And it's a song that speaks a lot about overcoming and how to live victorious in your life. And so this morning, I want to pull a few truths out of this carol about how we can live a life that is victorious and how we can make sure that we are overcoming on a regular basis. If you don't know, I'm going to have the lyrics up on the screen of the first verse and the chorus, and I'm also going to read them out because the lyrics go like this. Oh, come all ye faithful. By the way, just want to throw it out there for anyone who doesn't know Old English. Ye is literally just you in the plural tense. Uh, you're welcome. I'll look that up because I had no idea. So it's literally just you in the plural tense. So I'm like, why don't you say come all ye faithful? But it doesn't sound as nice as ye. You know what I'm saying? Like you, ye, you know? Anyways. But come all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. I come ye faithful, joyful, joyful, and triumphant. I come ye, I come ye to Bethlehem. I come and behold him, born the king of angels. Yes, I did just check the lyrics because I forgot them for a second. I saw you guys on that. <laughs> and then it's, I come let us adore him. I come let us adore him. You guys are good. Look at that. Christ the Lord. The next two verses, of course, go on to talk about how we should come and we should magnificent and worship Him and glorify Him because He's so amazing. But this morning, I wanted to focus on the first verse and the first chorus. The first verse and the first chorus, because I think there's some incredible truths. And as I was reading it, I was like, man, I really found myself going, there's some incredible God truths. There's some incredible Christ revelations in this carol. And if you don't believe me, just going, well, Dan, that sounds good, but it's just a Christmas carol. Well, I want you to read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 to 58. It says, But thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And I don't know about you, but when I read that verse, I can't help but think of this carol. I can't help but think of this triumphant carol when I read that verse and it's saying, hey, God has overcome everything, but not only has He overcome everything, you should be working enthusiastically and with joy and with a spring in your step and you should not fear anything because He has already won the victory, which speaks about triumph and joyfulness and faithfulness. And I'm like, man, this is such a good revelation that's found this carol and the Word of God. So this morning, I want to unpack a little bit this carol. I want to unpack and look at, man, what does this carol teach us about how to live a life that we can overcome? How do we live a life that is victorious? How do we live a life where we face things and we don't have to be defeated by them, but rather we can rise up and be triumphant in what God's calling us to do? Does that sound good this morning? Now, Pastor Tony did mention before that I'm a youth pastor uh, here at Victory Church, and uh, it is the most amazing thing to lead our youth ministry here. So uh, shout out to Victory Youth. Uh, You guys are awesome. Um, Also, sneaky plug, this next Friday is our last Friday for youth, so you should come along and hang out if you are between the ages of year 6 and year 12. Uh, Come and hang out. It's going to be a great night. Um, Sneaky plug. But... um, also, uh, I'm also a youth pastor, which means that uh, I just like loud, loud things. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I don't know what it is about it. It's just like, youth pastors is just like, you have to just like loud things, which means that I like, like loud people as well. And so I need you guys to be loud this morning because, you know, mainly just because it's insecurity in me. Uh, and so I just need you guys to compensate it for me, if that's all right. Um, come on this journey with me this morning. It's going to be great. and believe that God's going to reveal stuff to us. So it's going to be awesome. But the question is, how do we live a victorious life? How do we live a life that's overcoming? And the first thing I want to pull from this carol is quite simply this, is that in order to live an overcoming life, we've got to be faithful with our approach. O come all ye. O come all ye. We've got to be faithful with our approach. You may be asking, well, Dan, what does that mean? Faithful with our approach. Man, whenever we face a situation with anything comes up in any day that we wake up, we got to be faithful with how we operate and how we approach things. In order to live a life where we overcome, in order to live a life where we're living victoriously, we can't just be going just one step at a time, just like, you know, we'll see what happens. No, we got to approach life with a faithful mentality each and every single day. What does that look like? Faithful literally looks like being consistent and being courageous. See, faithful actually speaks about two things. Faithful can talk about, hey, the fact that you stuck around and you, you are still here or you're still someone, you're being consistent in something. But faithful can also actually talk about being courageous and having a faith in you that is overflowing as well. It talks about two things, being consistent and courageous. So when we approach things in life, or when maybe hardships come at us, or maybe this time of year, it can be quite stressful for a lot of us because we feel like we have a lot of financial pressure for whatever reason. And sometimes we can find ourselves not being faithful with our approach. But if we're consistent and courageous with how we operate on a day-to-day basis, I believe that God will see victory in our life and we'll see victory in our life through operating how God has pointed us and the direction He's laid before us. So faithful literally means to be consistent and courageous, but it also means to remain immovable and steadfast. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says this, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, letting nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord will not ever go in vain. My dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Be immovable. Be steadfast. You know what the crazy thing is about being steadfast, about about being immovable? It actually has nothing to do with the ground around you. Often I think that we go, well, I'll be steadfast and immovable when I've got some solid ground underneath me, you know? You know, once, I, once I've established a good foundation, you know, once maybe I've got my life a little bit more together and a few th- more things are happening, or once maybe I'm at that certain level, then I'll start to be faithful, then I'll be immovable, you know? Once I get to that level, once I get that solid ground underneath my feet, maybe then I'll be steadfast, then I'll be immovable. And that would be a fair assumption because we're all human beings and that makes logical sense to us. But the crazy thing about God is that He doesn't do things that are logical to us. He does things His way, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know about you, but when I, when I think of steadfast and movable, that's what I think about naturally. But what I read in the Bible is I read of this man named Peter. 
Peter was a disciple in the Bible. He was one of Jesus' disciples. In fact, he was one of, there was a close group around Jesus, a group of three disciples, and he was one of them. And Peter was a man who, who didn't do anything but halves. Let's just say it that way. He didn't necessarily, he, he was kind of like an all or nothing type of guy, you know? Like he was, he was all in or not in at all. Um, and, and Peter was an incredible disciple. And we see this one instant, Peter is in a boat with other disciples and they're crossing a river and Jesus had actually sent them out before him. And he was like, hey, cross the river. He's like, I'll meet you on the other side. Uh, and, and halfway through, there's a storm that happens and things are going down. And then someone yells out, hey, I think I see something on the water. And what it is, is that actually Jesus is standing on the water, walking on the water. And all the disciples are like, what is going on? They're freaking out. They're like, what is happening? And Peter is the guy that goes, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you and I will come. First of all, Peter's crazy. Uh, Second of all, how good is his faith? And, and, And Jesus goes, Peter, come. And we see that Peter jumps out the boat and he starts walking on water. And we see he starts to walk on water. And isn't it interesting that Peter was steadfast and immovable even when he was walking on water? Which tells me it's got nothing to do with the ground that you stand on. It's all to do where you're looking. Being steadfast and immovable has nothing to do about where you're standing. It's about where you're looking. In order to be faithful, we got to be people who are looking to Jesus. We see Peter, when he's walking on water, he's got his eyes fixed on Jesus. He's got his eyes transfixed on him. He is steadfast in his gaze at him. He's going, God, I'm coming towards you. But as soon as he starts to look at the wind and the waves, what happens? He's not so immovable anymore. He's not so steadfast and he begins to sink. Because as soon as you look to the ground around you, as soon as you look to the circumstance around you to see how well you're doing, all of a sudden your eyes aren't fixed on the one who's calling you to greater and bigger things. And all of a sudden, you can't be so immovable because you're doing it in your own strength. And who knows that we're not that good that we can do everything in our own strength. I know that's me, you know, (laughs) definitely just ask my wife. (laughs) Uh, It's nothing to do with the ground you're standing on. It's all to do with where you're looking. Come on, where are you looking? In order to be immovable and steadfast, in order to be faithful with our approach, in order to overcome things, don't worry about the ground you're standing on. Don't worry, don't stress about having a firm ground or a firm foundation of going, well, I have to get all this sorted in my life before I come to Jesus. No, all you have to do is begin to look at Him and He'll start to take care of the rest. Keep your eyes fixed on Him. That is how we have a faithful approach in every situation. Isn't it interesting that the word faithful is the word faithful? Like, like, we don't say, we don't have a word in the English dictionary that's like faith half full. All one word, no spaces, you know? Like, like oh, come all ye faith half full, joyful and triumphant. No, no, because Jesus is calling us to be full of faith. Not just consistent, but courageous and full of faith on a daily basis. Filled to the point of overflowing. I'll tell you what, when I was rocking up here yesterday, ready to pack some boxes with the Christmas box team, there were a bunch of faithful people in this place. I'll tell you what, they were dancing, they were grooving, they were packing boxes and all that. I was like, man, this is awesome. And I'll tell you what it did to me. It rose my level of, my level of faith. Me seeing other people full of faith rose my level of faith. And I thought I was rocking up faithful, but seeing other people full of faith actually rose my level of faith. And I believe that my level of faith probably rose other people's levels of faith. And all of a sudden, we're in this cycle of faith increasing because we're rocking up faith full and not faith half full. How are you rocking up to things on a Sunday? How are you rocking up to work midweek? Are you rocking up faith full at work? When you rock up, are you going, God, I know you're going to use me today. I'm going to rock up faith full. I'm going to be the best example of your light in this workplace. And I'm not just talking about being the nice person. You know the nice person, you know, like the nice guy, you know? Like there's some people that are just gifted to be nice. (laughs) I am not one of them. (laughs) That is God's grace that is on my life. I'm not talking about the nice guy. I'm talking about going to work and working hard. Let's work hard. Let's be a great example of going, hey, no, no, no. We believe when someone gives us a task, it's worth doing well, yeah? If a job is worth doing, it's worth doing well. And so when we rock up to work, we're not just rocking up and going, well, I'm here every day. We're actually rocking up and going, man, we're full of faith. And we're believing that God is going to use what we do to speak to other people on a regular occasion. Come on, we've got to be faithful, guys. How are you you coming back home? Can I just say really quick, 
we love our youth ministry, but I see far too many young people who have damaged relationship with their parents because potentially they're not in a home which is faithful. Because sometimes we operate in a place where we use up all our faith in other places and we come home and we try to switch off. But I'll tell you what, we need homes that are full of faith. We need homes that are full of faith because not only for the family, but there are young people growing up that need the example in their life of how to come home and how to be still full of faith because who knows, your faith doesn't have to dwindle when your tiredness rises. Just because we're tired doesn't mean our faith has to go to the wayside. Young people, when you come home from school, are you full of faith? Are you full of faith? What are we walking into and how full of faith are we? When you rock up on a Sunday to serve on a team, are we full of faith? Come on. We have an opportunity to be hands and feet of Jesus every single day. And what allows us to overcome and be victorious in that is how much faith and how full we are of it. Come on. Let's not be Christians that are come all you half full faith people. Let's be a come all faithful people. Does that sound good? Come on, let's be faithful people. In order to be victorious, it's not only about being faithful with your approach, but it's actually also about being joyful with your attitude. Joyful with your attitude. And hey, it's a great season anyway, so we can always be joyful in this season. But I think that Christmas is one of those seasons where people aren't actually necessarily joyful. I think Christmas is one of those seasons where we feel like sometimes we have, oh, just give me a second, it's a little bit warm up here, just going to use a sweat towel. Ooh. Everyone's like, Dan, you always use a sweat towel. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I rocked up this morning, fun fact, I rocked, this, rocked up this morning wearing a grey shirt and I was like, I ain't wearing a grey shirt no more on stage, so <laughs> just had to go quickly change that sucker. But anyways, <laughs> joyful with our approach. I think Christmas is one of those seasons where there's a lot of festivities that go on, but I think there's a lot of people that are lacking joy in their life in Christmas. Because the one thing I do know about joy is that it's not attached to a season, it's a lifestyle. And this may be a joyous and jolly season, but if we're not careful, we're going to miss that. And all of a sudden, we're going to think it's related to the season and not what we're choosing on a daily basis. Come on, we've got to be joyful, joyful with our attitude. Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says this, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. That's a word for me on Christmas Day. You know, if any of you got extra food, hit me up. I'd love to come over and help you guys out, clean up, all that sort of stuff be awesome. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you want to know why joy is so important? It's because it's your strength. It's a thing that will help you face things in life on a regular basis. And I think that, I don't know about you, I can find myself so often forgetting that joy is my strength and thinking that my strength is my strength. And we just operate in this place where we like, we keep trying to strive and do things better. And, and we're like, well, if I can just do this, if I can just do that, if I can just get that promotion, if I can just buy that person that thing, if I can just, and we operate in this place where we're trying all by ourselves in our own strength. But God was going, hey, when did I ever ask you to try by yourself in your own strength? He said, no, no, I asked you, I said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy is our strength. It's our strength. See, here's the crazy thing about joy being our strength is that joy is not in us, it's actually in Him. So joy is when it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I think sometimes we chase around finding our happiness when really we should be seeking His joy to be strong. We try and find our happiness to be strong, but really that's not the thing that's going to make us strong at all. No, no, no. The joy of the Lord is our strength. What's His joy? In order for you to be joyous, you've got to understand what His joy is. In order for you to be strong, you've got to know Him to know what He loves, what He enjoys, because that will be your strength. It's not in us, it's in Him. You know, Philippians 4 verse 4 actually talks about how we should rejoice in the Lord always. And actually says it again. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And it says, and I'll tell you again, rejoice in the Lord. You know when someone says something twice, you should probably pay attention to it. You know, like the first time Ms. Shari asked me to take the bin out. And then she mentions it the second time. And I'm like, ooh, okay, I better go do it, you know. 
Come on, it's in the Bible. And it's like literally the sentence after one another. It's like, why would the author sit there and go, man, like, let me just write this twice. It's not like he just forgot the sentence he wrote before. No, he's repeating it twice because he's, it's so important. He wants us to understand, rejoice in the Lord always. When? Always. Like we said about being faithful, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. Because joy isn't about what's happening around you. It's about what's happening in you. Joy is a choice. And we've got to choose it every single day. So the question is, man, how do we choose joy? How do we access that? Well, in John 16, 24, it says this, Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. This is Jesus talking. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Now, I'm going to unpack this a little bit to find out exactly what Jesus is saying. But I find the first thought I pull out of this is just simply this, that joy comes when we align our heart with His heart. Notice how it says, you have not asked for anything in my name. This is Jesus talking. In my name. In order for our joy to, com- to be complete, our heart has to align with His heart. It's not about chasing what we want. It's about chasing His plan for our life. It's all to be joyous. It's not about us striving. It's about chasing what He wants us to do on a regular occasion. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says that for the joy set before Him, talking about Jesus again, He endured the cross. For the joy set before Him, He endured the cross. He enjoyed the most brutal hardship He ever faced. Why? Because of the joy set before Him. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read that, I'm like, what is that like? How can you be like, man, I faced the cross because, you know, of the joy. I'm like, huh? You died a brutal death, Jesus. How are you joyous? But as you dive into it, what it tells me is that joy, once again, isn't based on your situation. It's not based on what's happening to you. It's a choice. And we see that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane says, God, if this cup can be taken away from me, But not my will, your will be done. In other words, God, not my plan, but your plan be done. And so when it says, for with the joy set before me, endure the cross, what Jesus is understanding in this moment is that joy comes from aligning his heart with God's heart. That's aligning his plan with God's plan, not the other way around. I think sometimes I find I'm so guilty of that. I'm like, God, what's your plan? How can it fit into my life? And God's like, how about going, you know, hey, God, what's your plan and how can I fit my life into it? (laughs) I'm like, God, what's your plan and when can I put it into action? God, what's your plan and when can I do it? And God's like, no, 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 it's my plan. (laughs) You got to trust in me every single day. Come on, be joyous. The way we be joyous is not by allowing ourselves to think that it's milestones, but rather it's just following God's plan for our life. It's aligning our heart with His heart on a regular basis. In order, for, in order to do that, we need to make sure that we know what He loves, that we're spending time with Him, that we're enjoying Him on a regular occasion, that we're reading our Word, that we're worshiping, that we're doing things like talking to our friends about where we're at with God. Come on, we're made to do life alongside of each other. In the moments where you feel like your joy has been sto- stolen, sorry, don't just try and fight along. No, bring someone else on the journey with you. Allow them to remind you that joy comes from Him and His plan, and us surrendering to His plan, and not us striving. See, the enemy knows that joy is your strength, right? If your strength comes from joy, but joy is a choice, he can't actually stop you from making a choice. He doesn't have that power, right? He can't stop you from making a choice. So what he does is that he'll try and attack your situation and your happiness, because happiness is a feeling based on the things happening around you, right? That's what, that, that's what that is. Happiness is a feeling based on the things happening around you, what's happening to you. So what he'll do, he knows he can't take your choice away, but he'll make it as hard as he, he can for you to actually choose joy. Because if he knows it's your strength, he knows he can't steal it because it's a choice and he knows it's not his to steal. So what he'll do is that he'll come after the things around you. And so in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the season where it seems confusing, in the midst of where you're going, what is going on? I thought that God had great plans for me. Maybe just depend and trust and put your eyes back on him and know... That in that season, that it's not anyone punishing, but rather it's someone trying to attack your strength. It's someone trying to attack your strength. Come on, we got to surrender our plan to his plan. My parents always used to say, obedience is immediately, immediately completely, and with a smile. And I hated it when I, when I was younger, but now I'm like, man, I'm going to steal that for my kids one day. Um, and I'm going to claim it. I'm, by my, I'm like, kids, this is what I came up all by myself. Um, 
and I'm never going to admit it to my parents, so. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Immediately, completely with a smile. Immediately, he talks about the time in which you do it. Completely, he talks about how you do it. In terms of the completion of the work, make sure it's done wholly. Obedience, immediately, completely, and with a smile. Smile talks about the attitude. Come on, how are you doing what you're doing? It's not just enough to do it immediately or completely. No, we've got to do it with a smile on our face. Come on. Yesterday, when we had 1,000 boxes being packed, 50 boxes every seven minutes, by the way, a whole nother level of awesome. When, that, when people were working hard, we were doing it immediately. We were working hard. We were working quick. They were completing boxes completely with excellence. But I'll tell you, the most amazing thing was seeing the smile on everyone's face as we were doing it. And the stories and, and, and the joy that was in the room based on that. Come on, it's not just enough just to do it and complete it. No, no, how are you doing it? Come on, let's be a light to the world, yeah? Let's overcome. Let's, let's let joy be our strength on a regular occasion. Come on, faithful with your approach. We've got to be joyful with our attitude. But number three, as the band comes up, we not only have to be faithful and joyful, but we've got to be triumphant in our actions. We've got to be faithful with our approach, how we approach things. We've got to be joyful with our attitude and how we do things. But we've got to be triumphant in how we operate. So I don't know if you know this, but Jesus has already won. Like, I think I have to remind myself so often of that, you know, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I've got this battle I have to face in my life at the moment. I'm going to try and win and be victorious in it. And Jesus is like, bro, I already sorted it, man. He's like, the victory is in me already. But here I am striving. Here I am chasing after in my own strength, not being faithful, not being joyous because, you know, often that's what pride takes you to and it takes you away from those things. And here I am just chasing after it and Jesus is going, bro, Dan, hey, what are you doing? I've already won the victory. You don't have to win it. I just need you to walk in it. You don't have to win it. I just need you to walk in it. We've got to be triumphant with our actions. Oh, come all you faithful, joyful and triumphant. Romans 8.37 says this in the NLT, Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Jesus Christ who loved us. The NIV translation says that we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. If you remember the Scripture I read at the beginning, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, But thank God, He gives us victory over sin and death through Jesus Christ. Jesus has already won. That thing that you're facing in this season where it seems like everyone else is having a great time and, and celebrating and being joyous and all these things, that thing that you're facing. I'll tell you what, Jesus has already won the battle for what truly matters, and that is your freedom. Your freedom. And as a result, He wants to outpour His grace on your life, His mercy, His love to be your portion so that you don't have to face it alone. Come on, He's already won the battle. Come on, when we know the outcome, it changes the way we walk. When you know the answer, it changes the way that you approach the situation. If you were playing in a sporting team and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were gonna win, I'll tell you what, you would enjoy the game far much, far more. Even if there were some hard moments in the game, you would enjoy the game far more. Because the reality is, is that you understand and you know you're about to win. So what happens is that you don't try and strive it, but rather you enjoy it and you're in the flow of it. If you've ever been watching a sporting game, you can see a team's just trying too hard. Or maybe you're watching boxing or something like that. You can just see someone stiff, you know? Someone's just, it's just stiff. and They're not in the flow. They're not in the rhythm of it. I think sometimes we can be guilty of approaching God that way. We get all stiff. We get all, this is what I do at this moment. I raise my hands during the chorus of this worship song, but I lower them again for, you know, during the, during the verses because I've got to really spend some time with God. But then the instrumental comes and I raise my hand again because the hand raising moment. But I feel like God doesn't want us to be stiff in our approach with Him because He's won the victory. He's won it already. He's won the battle. He's sorted. 
He doesn't need your help to win. He's already done that, right? That's solid. That's done. That's full stop. There's no comma when he said it is finished. It was a full stop, not a comma sentence. It is finished, full stop. Which means we don't have to be stiff. We can be in rhythm. We can be in His rhythm. We don't have to approach things stiffly and trying to make it happen. We can rest in His triumphant victory and His glory on a daily basis. See, this church isn't just called Victory because it's a catchy name. This place is called Victory because we want every person to realise that there is a victory that is waiting for them that you can live in. That you don't have to face it alone because He already won it. He already won it. See, we have the confidence of the cross behind us. And that means that fear no longer has a grip on us. So when you're approaching a situation and you feel fear rising up, you gotta tell fear that you have the confidence of the cross and He's already won the victory, which means He has no place on you. Think about that for a second. If you already know the outcome in the end and He's already won, why does fear rise up? It's because it's trying to stop us from outworking the triumph and victory that He's placed in our life. We need to learn to rely on the confidence of the cross. Deuteronomy 3, 31, sorry, verse 6. Be strong and courageous for the Lord goes with you. Same victory of the Lord. I wonder if you guys can stand with me real quick. That'd be amazing. So we got to live a victorious life. God is calling us to live a victorious life. Go, come on, you faithful, joyful, and triumphant. Faithful with our approach. Joyful with our attitude. Triumphant with our actions. But ultimately, in order to live victorious, I think the next part of this carol comes in, and this is how I'm just going to close really quick. O come ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to where? Bethlehem. In order to live with true victory and in order to be able to overcome in your life, it's saying you've got to come back to Bethlehem. And we're going, well, Dan, that's kind of a long way to travel. Don't have that many miles on my Qantas frequent flyer points. And it's not talking about that. It's talking about coming back to Jesus. But it's not just coming back, talking about coming back to Jesus. It says Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the birthplace of Jesus, right? It's where He entered the world. It's where He came from heaven down to earth. It's where He entered this world. It's the first moment He came. It's, it's His first love encounter with the world. So I believe what it's saying is not just come back to Jesus. In order for you to be victorious in life, you can't just keep going. You gotta learn to come back to your first love where your love first began. Have the revelation on a daily basis when you wake up, not just to go to Jesus and go, well, I'm just gonna open His Word. No, don't just open His Word. Go after His heart, your first love. The birthplace of your relationship with Him. Go after that. First love. Because ultimately how we be victorious is going after our first love. And once we go after our first love on a daily basis, all of a sudden we become faithful with our approach. We become joyful with our attitude and we become triumphant with our actions. Not because we're striving, because we're aligning ourselves with our first love being Jesus. Being Jesus. I'd love to pray with you really quick if that's all right. Dear Heavenly Father, so thankful for your love. We're so thankful, Lord God, that you loved us enough that even in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our situation, in the midst of our mistakes, you saw us and you chose to die for us anyways. That you saw us in the midst of our brokenness and you chose to come and make us whole. To provide a way for us to come back to you. And we know that not only are you trying to provide a way to come back to you, Lord God, but you want us to live a victorious life. You want us to live a life where we're overcoming. Where we face things, Lord God, and we don't strive, but we rest in the rhythm of You and are able to see You work through those situations. So this morning where we haven't been faithful, Lord God, we ask that You would give us the courage to be able to be consistent in our fullness of our faith, Lord God. That we would approach every situation, Lord God, not with a what if You don't show up, but what if You do rock up and You do move in a situation. That not only would we be faithful, Lord God, but we would be joyous with our attitude. That we would realise that your joy is our strength. That we would not let situations or circumstances try and steal that from us, but that we would rest in it. And Lord God, where we've been distracted 
and our joy has been stolen from us. And as a result, our strength, we come back to you this morning again and we say, won't you renew our joy, Lord God? Won't you align our hearts with you again? But we also ask that we'd have an understanding that you've already won the victory. And as a result, Lord Jesus, we get to live a triumphant life each and every single day. Doesn't matter what we're facing, you've already won the victory. So fear has no hold on us, but we are more than conquerors in your name. We thank you for that. So ultimately, Lord God, we just ask that you would help us to be able to overcome. Help us be faithful, help us be joyous, and help us be triumphant, Lord Jesus. But ultimately, help us remember your first love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.